While the U.S. Embassy in Minsk is urging Americans not to travel to Belarus for any reason and for those in the country to leave immediately due to what it calls a spillover risk from the war in Ukraine and the buildup of Russian military forces in Belarus. This, as Poland's President Andrzej Duda confirmed yesterday, that Russia started moving short-range nuclear weapons into Belarus, a move anticipated to change the security structure of the region and NATO's military alliance. And joining us now in the studio to talk about this and more is John Elliott, managing partner of the Brighton Strategy Group and former National Security Council spokesman for the Trump administration. John, always good to be with you. Uh, first off, let's talk about what's happening in Belarus right now. Obviously, a very concerning time, especially with Russia moving nuclear weapons into the country. That said, what do you think the strategy is here? And do you think Russia actually intends to use the weapons, or is it more posturing on their part? Well, it's not necessarily posturing, Tracy. First of all, it's great to join you, as always. But this isn't posturing as much as it is getting ready to have a credible threat to use tactical nuclear weapons. And obviously, that's just crossing a Rubicon in a big way if, if Putin were ever to go there. But what they have to do is they have to position and be ready if, to have a credible threat that could maybe force Kiev to come to the negotiating table with Zelensky. Because if you take a step back, the, what's happening in Ukraine right now is that the vaunted spring, now it's a summer offensive, is not going well for the Ukrainians against the Russians. There is a front of about 930 miles, and after about six weeks now, the Ukrainian forces have only been able to take back about 98 square miles. And they're really, there's a lot of minefields and whatnot that they're having real trouble moving through. So what's going to happen is that there's a lot of pressure to actually get Kiev get the Ukrainians to come to the negotiating table. And that's what President Trump has talked about and will definitely come up at the debate tonight, which is how to go forward on Ukraine in terms of the U.S. not failing to push the two sides together. And so that, that's a big question. And what you're seeing in Belarus right now is essentially Russian forces, including the Wagner Group, who are some really bad actors that have gone over into there, there's a risk to U.S. citizens that they don't want to have any U.S. citizens either hurt or targeted in some way. So it's best to get them all out of there, which is something that we did with our embassy a short while ago as well. Yeah, and John, as you know, the United States has authorized the Netherlands and Denmark to send American F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine. It was a plan that was in the works for a while, I understand, but now it's, it's taking effect. How does this change the game in the war in Ukraine, and do you think it will have an impact? Well, the allies, so it's actually Netherlands and Denmark that are both going to send about 42 right now, up to 42. They didn't actually, the, the Dutch and the Danes did not spe specify the actual number, but Zelensky said it's 42. But no matter how many it is, it's not going to be a game changer for this reason, Tracy. It is going to take at least four, probably six, maybe even eight months to actually have those fielded because you have to have training for the for the pilots who are not used to flying F-16s, and you actually have to have them be able to be capable there. So it's not like you can turn a switch and suddenly have that be a decisive outcome on the battlefield or, or a game changer on the battlefield. So what a lot of people are saying, because there's momentum, even the Pope, and we could talk about that, has failed to accept the Kiev version of what their terms for peace are, but instead wants to have the sides come together because the Pope Francis wants definitely to have peace as soon as possible there. What you're seeing is that that's going to probably happen because so many actors in the international community, including the U.S., hope, including the U.S. by all counts, is going to have to push people to the table because of political pressure. And so you won't even see those F-16s mobilized on the battlefield if they're able to, to push the two sides together to get a peaceful settlement in the next, say, six, eight months, and then they won't even be fielded by then. John, we have about a minute left, and I want to talk about, uh, you mentioned the Holy Father, and yesterday he had a meeting uh, with Catholic U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff Chairman General Mark Milley. Uh, neither the Vatican nor the U.S. Defense Department provided really information regarding this private audience, but we do know uh, there is a peace mission on behalf of the Vatican to help bring an end to the war in Ukraine. That said, what do you think that meeting signals, and also how significant is it? Well, it's significant, first of all, on a personal level for General Milley. He's Catholic, and he really reveres the pope, and this is a chance for him to be able to meet with him. But 
uh, on Ukraine, that's one area where General Milley, about a year ago, a little less than a year ago, actually said that this is somewhat of a stalemate and was that we should be open to a political solution. And that's different from the policy in the Biden administration, but that's a lot closer to where the Pope is by wanting to push the two sides together. So that could have been a meeting of the minds. They're keeping it as they always do with with Pope Francis and other popes. They, they keep these as private meetings and they don't give a readout, but certainly they have a lot of common ground when it comes to Ukraine. And so it would have been a very interesting uh, meeting to say the least. Yeah, and John, uh, unfortunately we have to leave it right there. There's so much more we could talk about, but always great to have you on and get your insights. We appreciate it. Thanks, Tracy. Good to be on.